Yes, hello everyone. My name is Jan and together with Benjamin, I will show you how to set your logs on fire with the Emotifier. So Benjamin and I, um, we are PhD candidates at KIT in Germany. And the Emotifier is joint work with Matthias Grundmann and Florian Jakob. So in the first part of this talk, I will uh, introduce you to the Emojifier, um, explain a bit uh, how we implemented it. But don't worry, it does not require any prior experience in scripting. It will be just a brief introduction. Uh, and then in the second part, uh, Benjamin will take over and um, yeah, deal with a more general perspective uh, on the Emojifier and um, with some questions uh, that were raised when we talked about the emoji file. So um, at first, let me talk a bit about the origin of the emoji file. So in August 2019, there was uh, the uh, first Zeek package contest. And um, yeah, the task was to create an innovative and useful open source package for Zeek. Um, and the day um, yeah, the, that um, uh, the package contest was announced. Uh, I went to lunch with my colleagues and unfortunately um, it took about an hour uh, until we got served the lunch. So um, yeah, we, we um, talked about the um, package contest and um, yeah, started to, to brainstorm. And uh, at some point uh, we noticed um, that roughly at the same time, Unicode support for logs was introduced in Zeek. Um, so the next step was quite clear. Um, if you have already worked with uh, Zeek, um, you might know logs like these. That is the, um, an excerpt from the connection log. Um, and yeah, this log obviously contains a lot of information. Um, remember, each line represents a single connection. But um, looking at this kind of logs can be yeah, quite overwhelming. So um, hence, we came up with the idea, why not just put emojis into the log? Um, and yeah, so we started to um, yeah, brainstorm, come up with ideas, um, and put emojis to each connection, while so that each um, emoji reflects a certain property of a connection. And finally, we came up um, with the list you can see here. So for example, we added a surfer emoji for HTTP traffic um, or the fire emoji for an intelligent set. Um, we also started to add emojis um, based on policies that are um, maybe not loaded by default. So for example, certificate, expiry, um, and so on. So um, now to um, go into details how we implemented uh, this, let's go back a bit to how Zeek actually works. So Vern already um, talked about this uh, in his first talk. So um, Zeek generally processes packets in its event engine and uh, generates a high level stream of ev events uh, using the event engine. And these events are then processed by scripts written in the Zeek scripting language. Um, and these scripts are responsible for creating logs or firing notifications. So to understand how we implemented the emoji fire, um, yeah, we can just uh, have a look of the life cycle of the connection um, in Zeek. So we just had to write a script that yeah, extends how Zeek um, does the logging. So in the beginning um, of uh, a connection uh, in, in, the, in the Zeek script land, there is uh, at first that variable, the connection. Um, this connection variable contains metadata about the connection. Um, and in the process of uh, Zeek analyzing the connection, there are different events that get fired. So first we have the new connection. Uh, and then we might have uh, more higher level events like HTTP requests. Uh, and finally, the connection state remove event. All those events um, get uh, a reference to that connections. Um, so in that case, C. So all these events um, can access uh, this connection information. And finally, in the connection state remove event, um, we have another variable field of type uh, coninfo, 
which then represents the actual log line that is written. So data from the connection um, is merged together into that um, connection info um, record and written to the log file. So now um, to add emojis, um, we started with adding emojis based on the information we have in connection. So what we had to do is actually just handling the connection state remove event. Um, and what we did was we just um, extended the con info record with an, uh, a new string that will represent the emojis um, and put the emoji in there based on that event. So if you look at the code, that's um, yeah, quite, quite simple. You can see here how we extended the con info record um, with an emoji field um, of type string, which by default is empty and um, yeah, gets, gets logged then in the log file finally. So um, then we have the event part. Um, you can now see on the right side where we just uh, had a look, simple if statements. Can we see um, certain properties in the connection? For example, we had a look at the connection bytes seen or missed. Um, we had a look um, at common protocols. Um, and yeah, finally also at some properties um, with respect to the history of a connection. Um, and I guess you can think that of um, yeah, the, the time when we came up with uh, that emojis, it was real fun writing, writing that script. So um, the next step is um, setting the log actually on fire because um, you have seen um, in, that, in that script already, we have put a couple of emojis, but we haven't put fire to the logs. So for that, um, we wanted to deal with uh, intelligence matches. And uh, an intelligence match cannot be deduced from just the connection field, as we've seen in the connection state remove event, because um, there's another event evolved, in that case, the Intel match event. Um, so what we had to do is to find a way um, to get that information into the connection state remove event and then put it there. So what we um, did now is we just also extended the connection with an emoji trail, another string. Um, and then um, that allowed us to also handle other events. In that case, um, we handled the intelligence uh, match event that uh, appends um, the, the fire emoji to the emoji trail. And that finally flows into the connection state remove event. And from there into the emoji string um, that will finally get into the log. So um, extending um, the emoji fire now is quite simple. We have that emoji trail that is also part of the connection record um, that is basically uh, available in um, all events. You can see that here um, in the intelligence match event, um, you can uh, access that connection um, uh, variable uh, via the Intel scene. So it's not directly part of the signature of the event, but in the scene um, record, you can access the, the connection that is involved. And the only thing you have to do if you want to add your own emoji is to concatenate to that emoji trail in the connection. So there are, of course, further examples. Um, we recently added fun with flags um, that will add flags based on the geolocation of the responder and originator IPs to that emoji trail. And we have also built in um, support for the notice framework. So if you want to um, map some emojis to um, yeah, certain um, notifications, you can just extend the custom notices table. Uh, and of course, we are looking forward uh, to your pull request. So if you can come up with uh, more ideas uh, how to color your connection log file or maybe other log files, uh, just file a pull request. So um, that project was obviously um, much fun. But um, that one day, um, we talked to Benjamin, who focuses on usability and security in his research. Um, and um, yeah, actually, that raised a couple of questions. And uh, with that, I will uh, hand over to Benjamin.
Yeah, thank you, Jan. So uh, when Jan introduced the emoji fire to us, we really had the idea that this thing is like this tool is going to help people. Um, and as we are a researcher, we wanted to look into not only waiting for pull requests for people to um, come up with ideas, we also wanted to do it a bit more active. Um, therefore, like uh, I studied psychology, so I want to really help people under like understand how people want to use such a tool and how such a tool can help people. And um, there are various questions that evolve from this. So we want to like lit up the fire even more for emoji fire and start a discussion for you. So like what is the best place for having such a discussion as the Zeek week uh, with a lot of people that are like more experienced as myself in using Zeek. And today we only want to start this discussion um, with you that are using the Zeek logs actually every day. Um, and this discussion is not supposed to end with the event. So we are open for having discussions um, even afterwards. Um, and there are like two possibilities. Um, the one possibility is the Slack channel, but if you also want to send us some information that you maybe not want your name on it, we also provide you with this script pad uh, document where all the questions that we will discuss later on are going to be written down. So you can put stuff there that you maybe don't want to be related to your name because of various reasons. Um, yes, uh, so on the next slide, um, there's like this first aspect that we are really interested in what actually Emojifier helps people with um, in terms of security. So what are people like you that use Zeek logs and that look at Zeek logs think would be the greatest benefit, especially in the aspect of security, when using Emojifier and like what could be um, evolved even further, um, you are also completely free to give us other feedback of things you like or think you dislike from what you saw, what uh, Jan was presenting to you. And as we are doing research and we want to compare it to others, um, an idea was if some people know uh, like other tools or other possibilities that do similar stuff than Emojifier. Um, and that leads to the next question, like um, what are situations when logs are still relevant for you? And when do you move to another platform? So maybe a platform that processes information and changes them into a graphical uh, analysis. And like we wanted to actually know cases where you still look into logs and like what is like the step where you move into other tools that go further than logs and maybe aggregate data or summarize data. Um, another aspect, um, when we look into like who is um, actually, um, if you want to do a study on the emoji fire, it's about the skills that people use or people need to understand uh, these logs. So one thing that we would really be interested in, what do you think would be a skill that you need to have to interpret the logs? So maybe it's some knowledge, maybe it's experience, or maybe it's something we haven't thought about yet. So we are completely relying on your experience, what you think should someone has, which knowledge. And um, in the same context, a question would be like, imagine we would uh, think about a study and we want to have students doing some tests with the emoji fire. What should we teach those students that would need to learn in a lecture or in something like in a lab? So they have enough background knowledge to actually can like do an actual analysis of uh, Zeek logs, uh, especially in the context of security and leading to the last question, like what makes a good analysis of these logs? So what aspects of a person has to have to be like a good analysis? Um, that also leads to the uh, last slide for questions we have. Um, it's about a group of people. So is there maybe some audience that we could talk to if you want to proceed with a study on the emoji fire comparing to other stuff to actually actively develop the emoji fire so it is 
helping people in their everyday life. So is there like who, who you think would be the best audience to talk to if you want to know more about the emoji fire helping people in their practical life? Um, is there maybe a specific group of people, maybe a specific community? So like what makes a group of people um, using this or is there a special activity that people share when looking into these um, logs? So those are the questions that we came up with when we think about how can we improve the emoji fire? How can we make it even more like even better, develop it further and help the community even more, especially in our domain, like helping people detect security incidents so that maybe a company or an organization is more safe because they use a, an emoji fire uh, or something similar um, to detect security interventions. Um, yeah, I think that's it from my side. There's like a plenty amount of possibilities to get in contact with us. You can use Slack, you can use email, you can put information into the document and we would be really happy to have an open discussion with you afterwards about your ideas and your experience in using the Zeek logs and maybe put Emoji Fire to use with, the, with Zeek.